The beautiful New York City. Today was a day I have been looking forward to for a while. I get to visit Oscorp's genetics laboratory. After leaving school, I made my way down the streets. Coming inside the lab, I spotted it. The largest electron microscope on the eastern seaboard. And as a non-nerd, that may sound like a lot of boring stuff, but boy was it a cool thing to me. Here they are altering the genes of spiders and creating entirely new species. Species that could run faster, jump higher and have even stronger webbing. And while looking at all these spiders, I noticed that one of the cages was empty. The researchers assured me that it was being tested on and that's when I felt it. A hard pinch on my hand. I thought I saw something so I went to go investigate. But I didn't see anything. It must have just been my imagination. I started to feel a bit sick so I decided it was time to make my way home. Walking down the streets, my head pounded and my vision was becoming blurred. I must have gotten a sudden sickness from something. Driving home, I stumbled into my room and climbed into bed. And before I could fall asleep, it looked like there was something in my room crawling around. What is that? Waking up in a strange land with my city nowhere in sight. For some reason, I am feeling incredibly strong. Strong enough to punch down a tree. With a few logs, I made my way to the nearest mountain and crafted up a wooden pickaxe. With a bit of cobblestone mined, I now have a full set of stone tools at my disposal. I decided to climb up this mountain to get a good look at my surroundings. Really no civilization in sight. Good thing I took those survival classes. I stopped and grabbed some sugar cane and collected up as much pop as I could as I know I will need these later on. I also stopped and took down some sheep for some wool. Sorry, can't be sleeping in the dirt. I then stumbled my way into a cave and collected some coal. Now running low on food, gonna need to find a way to replenish. Hello, chickens. Don't mind me. With a furnace made, I cooked up some dinner. With night approaching, I crafted up a bed and headed to sleep. In the morning, I grabbed my things and made some more friends. I then stumbled into a cave and, well, it dead ended pretty fast. I guess I will snag up this coal. In another cave, I fought off some more mobs before grabbing a bit of ore. Just a bit deeper in the cave, I found a dungeon. With all the mobs eliminated and the spotter lit up, I grabbed all the supplies in the chest. Next, I found some black iron and then fought off some more mobs. Also got this iron. Back outside, I cleared away some some grass and slapped down a couple base necessities. I got the black iron in the furnace and headed to bed. Next day, I waited for my few oars. I ended up hearing a bunch of skeletons and after fighting a few and letting them fight themselves, I found there was yet another dungeon nearby. Lucky me. This chest practically had the same items as the other dungeon. I had a pretty good time as you can see. I ended up spending the next little while running around in the caves, gathering oars and fighting mobs. With some of the iron found, I made an iron pickaxe and went back for some of the ores I couldn't grab. And then some extras. Next, I went on another chicken run, but this time running into a group, I decided it would be best to capture them because surely I would make all the chickens extinct around here in the near future. Once led back to the base area, I went and grabbed some wood and built up a small pen. And after battling a bit to get them in, I gave them some seeds. Sorry, buddy, you're the odd one out. And then called it a day. For the next day, I spent my time rounding up any remaining stragglers around the area. This guy just wouldn't go in. And yet again, I am back in the caves, but this time I found a ravine, so let the ore mining begin. I ended up going through two stone pickaxes, and back at my base, I got my items in the furnace and shoved everything in the chest. Also breeded up the chickens, and before I knew it, night was creeping up. For the next day, I decided it was a good idea to start up a base, a spider lair. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Pixelmon to Go, which is an amazing community driven project that brings you into the world of Pokemon. They have many cool features such as voice chat, dancing emotes, costumes, and daily events such as huge boss battles. Also entertainment shows where people can sing or perform. Here is what the textures and costumes look like in game and it's all in this amazing launcher. You can log in with your Mojang or Microsoft account. All you have to do is press play to start your adventure. Don't forget to use slash waterish puppy in game to claim your free backpack. Get the link in the description to download for free. I would say that our nice little cave base turned out very 
very well, and I also have much space to expand. Now it's time to start looking into our first Spider-Man suit. Going to need the suit assembly unit, and to craft this up, I'm going to need a variety of items, including lots of black iron, electronics, and a literal computer monitor. I got all my current black iron smelting and kind of finished the base towards the end of the day, and I will say that the house does look really good out at nighttime with it all lit up. Now in order to craft some of these items for the Spider-Man suit, I'm going to need a lot more ores. So time to do what any sane Minecraft player does and begin the wonderful journey of strip mining. After going through all of those pickaxes, I was lucky enough to find some diamonds, which gives me a diamond pickaxe and enables me to get a lot more ores. I spent a very good amount of time collecting all the ores I found through my strip mining. At the end of it all, here's all the ores I collected. I filled up my furnaces with as much ores as I could and headed to sleep. In the morning, I decided it would be a good idea to start up a farm, as I can't be breaking grass all over every time I need to breed the chickens. And well, that's when a random portal appeared and started dropping super overpowered mobs that will be able to one-shot me all over my base. I ended up running a bit away since I don't have my Spider-Man gear just yet, and luckily when I returned, they had all decent spawned. I dodged that one. I finished up my farm, restocked all of my furnaces, and went to bed. In the morning, there was a zombie horde outside. These spitter guys have a very dangerous toxin, and followed by the zombies was another nether invasion, and as you can hear, it just dumps out guys. I started adding some stairs in the mine tunnels, and another portal opened. That's like three in a row. After hanging out a bit, I went outside to see if anyone was around, and it looks like I am in the clear. Real quick, I grabbed this cactus. Now time to start work on the first Spider-Man suit. I began crafting up as many things as I could, and not long, I had the suit crafter. Now I need a generator to power it. With some more crafting, the last item I need is packed ice. Looks like it's time to go on an adventure. After traveling for a couple of days, I was able to find a mountaintop that had a patch of snow. With a bunch of snow gathered, I made some ice and then packed ice. As I started back to base, I noticed there was a swamp nearby. I decided to stop as the swamp has some much needed mobs. Also a lot of mobs for food. I waited until nightfall. Once things have spawned in, I could already spot some of the mobs that I need for items. While going for the slime, I was hit by a spider. This interaction with the spider triggered something in me. I began to sense when danger was coming my way and able to run at speeds that almost seemed supernatural. I ran around fighting as many mobs as I could, leveling up, even if they were just some helpless slimes stuck in a pool of water. I went on to fight a bunch of mobs and found that I had become even stronger. I'm doing more damage to mobs. Once the sun was up, I made my way back to base, and my super speed really helped out a lot. Back at base, I crafted up the temperature regulator and built up the generator. Then I decided it was time to add a little bit more space onto the base for new equipment. And there we go, got the computer down. Just need to pop in a lightning ingot and she powers on up. This is the Spider-Man suit I want to craft first. Well, since it's one of the coolest looking ones. I got a chest thrown down. I will use this to store all the items I make for the suit. Next, I started on some web shooters. Had a little bit of a malfunction, which shot webs all over the base. No big deal. Let's just clean this all up with a sword. Next items I need to work on are fabrics. So off to find some sheep, I go. Luckily for me, there was a whole bunch around here. Ended up getting a good stack of wool, also was able to to find a small village not too far away from base. I spent the rest of the day fighting off zombies in the desert. Once it was dark enough, I returned home. The next day, I started on the fabrics. Needed white fabric, blue fabric, and also some black fabric. Didn't have enough ink sacs. I also used some of the radioactive string I got from the swamp to make radioactive fabric to craft the Spider-Man logo. I still need to get an orange gem, some more radioactive fabric, and red leather. I can craft up the web shooters with my current supplies. But time to go into the wilderness and get the rest some cows for the leather, and all the way back to the swamp, gotta get some more of those spiders. The shaders glitched a bit, but hey, free x-ray. After the journey back to base, yes, I did steal these from a skeleton, and I got this gem from one of the spitter zombies. I crafted up the remaining materials, and lo and behold, I forgot about the tokens. 
And with a little bit of power and 7,000 tokens achieved, I can suit up as the legendary Spider-Man. I decided to go with this costume since it looks really cool with the white accents to the suit. Also, the eyes have that angry look to them. Let's see what this suit can do. With my web shooters, I can shoot out a web and fling myself around. It can launch you pretty far, and it's going to take a bit of practice to get my aiming dialed in. But once it is, I can fly over mountaintops. Yeah, this is gonna take a bit of work to get used to for sure. My next ability is to shoot some webs. If I can hit a mob, it will encase them in webs. Also have a wheel for all sorts of different web abilities. Next one seems to do the same. The third one ends up being a grenade that explodes webs all over the place, stopping enemies. Got this web that sounds more powerful than the others. The red one, as expected, is fire webs. The green one poisons enemies, also can use my webs to pull in enemies for close range. Blue, did it just change a zombie into a zombie villager? Let's try that again. Okay, blue is freezing, that makes sense. I spent the rest of the night practicing my abilities and just like my friend Iron Man, it seems that punching is the best way to go when you have super strength. Mine just is natural and I don't need a fancy iron suit to be strong. For the next day, I decided it was a good time to get myself a portable modular device, or as I like to call it, a cell phone. I had all the materials on hand, and just like that, I can see all my abilities. Also, sadly, it turns out that I only got the skill points for when I had the suit made. Just notice that my suit is back to full durability. Regeneration? Awesome! Regenerates health and durability. Already, night was creeping up. I went out to grind some of those skill points. I mainly used my fist to do the fighting, but would also use some webbing at other enemies. Overall, this one-two combo of shooting webs and running up and pounding on mobs worked very well. I thought maybe with my suit I could take down a giant zombie. Yeah, they do quite a bit of damage and have a lot of rain. Once the night had finished, I moved on to fighting the mobs in the desert. Now I had 82 skill points and I was able to rank up twice, unlocking combat and the roundhouse kick. For some reason, the roundhouse kick wasn't working and the combat puts up both arms, but I think it works best against fighting high health enemies. Come another night, I fought the mobs, this time starting to use my web shooters to pull in enemies and my fire webs to light things up. For some reason, there was a ton of spiders around here. Maybe they are drawn into me? Also, was curious if I could grab an enderman with my webs. Yeah, it didn't work out the way I hoped. With that night over, I was low on food. I used my webs to get me back home quick, and I grabbed some of the grown wheat and replenished my hunger. I had enough skill points to unlock rank 4 and get the kick backflip. I messed with the settings and got the abilities working. The kick backflip even has the cool Spider-Man pose at the end. And with the roundhouse kick, I can now kick mobs in the face. How fantastic. Now this next part, I sat AFK for a couple of days to let my suit health go back up. Last thing I need to do is unlock the last of my abilities. So into the desert, I go to fight. It was a long couple of days fighting in the desert. I avoided being out in the dark. I'm so sick of skeletons. However, my moves have improved with my shots being more accurate. I can shoot myself around and pull in enemies to finish them off. I am becoming Spider-Man. Sadly though, I had been surviving off rotten flesh, but with my last skill point acquired, I maxed out my rank and unlocked the web barrage that shoots an abundance of webs dealing massive damage. I think Iron Man's shoulder guns work a little better, but hey, it does the job. With night approaching, I ran back to base and headed to bed. In the morning, I harvested up my wheat, breeded the chickens, and got something better than rotten flesh to eat. For my next task, I want to get some Eye of Ender, so I swung my way over to the desert. Got rid of some hostiles on the way, and checking out the village, it seems that there is only one villager remaining. Poor guy, all the zombies have taken out his friends. Guess I will just need to wait until nightfall to find some Endermen. As I was waiting on a tree, just my luck, a portal opened from the nether, here to just dump overpowered mobs on me. I tried to pull one up to fight me, and I ended up getting knocked down, and as you can see, my health flies down, and this is the exact reason I don't mess with these guys. After an almost not successful retreat, I was able to spot an enderman in the desert. He was kind enough to drop a pearl. Then moments later, another portal from the nether opened. Yeah, I'm out of here. Which ran me straight into a zombie horse. Man, this game wants me dead right now. After getting away, I fought two more Endermen and got another pearl. Cool thing about this mod is when I get 
low on health, the Spider-Man suit actually tears open. I was only able to get one more pearl for the night. Being on 100 health, I let my suit heal up for a few days, and that coming night, I went out for more Endermen. This night, I got pretty lucky and was able to obtain five Ender Pearls for the night. Come daytime, instead of waiting for night, I made my way into the mines, turned some lava into obsidian, and mined away. With 10 blocks gathered, I made a flint and steel and threw down a portal. Lucky for me, there wasn't anything super deadly around my portal. I gave the area a quick look around before being attacked by some pigmen. Time to head back home. With it being night, I continued my Enderman killing spree and only got one pearl for a total of 10 pearls. Now daytime, I headed back into the nether in search of a fortress. I swung around like a monkey in a jungle. I started to get used to the whole flinging myself around and I do have to say, it is one of the most fun things I have ever done in a Minecraft mod. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Man. I ended up swinging myself straight into another fortress. I didn't know if the mobs here were buffed like the pigmen, so I dug myself into a small hole to get some regeneration. With 300 health, I think it's good to go check things out. I decided to select the freeze web since blazes like to fly all over the place. I can say it worked just like I hoped. I continued to fight blazes that spawned at a relatively slow pace. Also found out that they are lava proof. Once I got my 10th blaze rod, I sprung my webs and got out of there. Just like the Iron Man flying, you can't use your ability when pigmen are near. So I just ran back to the portal till I could get a little swing. At the portal, there were a few pigmen, so I lured them away. Befriended them, and then they just casually let me go through the portal. How kind. Getting back home, I was worried I wouldn't be able to find any Endermen because of the rain. But it turns out these Endermen really don't care at all. From all the Endermen that I fought, which was quite a lot, I got three more pearls. With my 13 pearls, I returned home for a good night's rest. In the morning, I turned my blaze rods into blaze powder and crafted 13 Eye of Ender. Next, I swung up to the top of a tree and tossed out my first pearl. Looks like I'm heading that direction. I swung all the way till I reached the ocean and my next pearl sent me back in the direction I just came. While going back, I spotted a desert temple and went to explore. Going down inside, the chest had some crappy loot, but the real treasure is underneath, a bunch of big booms. Also really nice being Spider-Man since I can just crawl up the walls. Back to looking for the fortress. Well, there goes one of my pearls. Tossing another one out, it broke, but looks like we found the fortress. Just to be sure, I threw another one out. Yep, I grabbed some dirt and built a classic nerd pole. I began digging down and this diamond pickaxe is a lot faster. In no time, I was able to reach the walls of the fortress. Oh hey, here's that ore, yeah, that ore. Got made fun of last time I tried to say its name. Well, time to start exploring. After going through some doors, I found my first chest. With some amazing loot, I continued on in the fortress until I ran into this room. Thought it meant I was getting close to the portal room. I ran around for quite some time placing torches any way I go until I reached my second chest and third chest again crazy good loot going up some stairs I was able to find the library must be getting close inside the chest there was a sketchy book and in the next chest even more sketchy books not really sure if I should open these but I took the chance anyways inside it showed all sorts of very dangerous people that I really don't want to run into so let's put those books back and not worry about it also here in editing just notice these torches the heck eventually I was able to find the waterfall room and not long I was able to find the portal room. I got rid of the spawner as fast as possible, and lucky me, there is one Eye of Ender already in place. I wasn't planning on going in the portal just yet, but somehow accidentally hit the corner and guess we are starting the fight. After digging myself out, I found that the end looked very, very strange. The crystal towers were all over the place. Sadly, it doesn't look like my webs can break the crystals, so I just crawled up every tower with my Spider-Man abilities and let the crystals explode in my face. They didn't damage me at all. And this little tower has to be the best one by far, as I can just jump on top of it. Once all the towers were cleared, I started my assault on the dragon trying to get hits with my webs. Turns out that some little sticky webs are no match for the ender dragon, so I just had to punch it when it got close. This wasn't how I pictured the fight going. The dragon would just fly around for several minutes doing nothing until the small time he flies into me and I can get a hit off or sometimes miss them all. The most hits I ever got was three in a row. I had to do this little trading battle until the next day came, but at the end of it, 
I was patient enough to take the dragon down and claim all the glorious XP in Dragon A. Now that I was back in the overworld, it was getting dark, so I went to bed. In the morning, I was on the search for my base. Kind of forgot what direction I went from spawn, but I did find my house. I placed the dragon egg on the countertop and it looked kind of big and out of place, so I found a better spot for it. After a bit of thinking, I decided to harvest up my wheat field and breed up the chickens as I am running out of food. All nice things are happening here, I assure you. By the time I was all finished up, it was already becoming night. In the morning, I headed out into the nether. Once I had arrived at the fortress, I ran through all the chests and grabbed up all the good stuff. Then I began my battle with the wither skeletons, and after fighting a lot of them, I finally got my first skull. And with a lot more fighting, I now have three. I knew there was a reason I don't like fighting the wither. Back at base, I dropped off all my items and started a nice AFK session to get my health system back up. There was no way I am grinding for two emerald blocks. And this is the part where I forgot to get any soul sand. And then I had one of these lovely fellas show up and smack me around. After getting away, I snuck back into the portal. Just to be extra safe, I went out and found some cash for a bit of milk. Now it's time to get down into the caves and dig out a small area for the sketchy stuff. Once I had my cue, I started with a web barrage, hoping it would do damage. Well, if you want to do something right, you're gonna have to do it with your fists. Not that I needed it, I drank some milk. Also turned out that we went straight through a diamond vein in that battle, so sweet, some diamonds. Back home, it was already dark and time for bed. I awoke to a knock at my door. I wasn't able to see anyone through the windows, and sitting outside there was a lone book. Doesn't look like anyone is around. The book told me that my city was in danger and needed my help. Oscorpse was up to something nasty and I needed to stop it before it begins. The day had seemed to pass a lot faster than a normal day, and I sat pondering how I could return home. My pondering soon turned into tiredness, and my tiredness turned into sleep. And when I awoke, I was back in my bedroom. I quickly ran outside to take in the view of my amazing city. One of the first things I did was I shot a web and I flung myself way higher than I thought I would. Swinging from building to building was pretty awesome. I ran into a building that was on fire and went to investigate. It looks like the building was unoccupied so there was no one around or any furniture whatsoever. I will leave this to the fire department to take care of. I pretty much spent the rest of my day just swinging around town cause boy it was fun. About halfway through the next day I heard someone shooting. Going to investigate I found some thugs flashing their guns around. They immediately shot at me and luckily with all my abilities I was able to take them down. New York City has someone to keep them safe. But on the 100th day is when I heard an explosion. Oscorp's lab had genetically modified spiders that had become explosive. Coming inside, it was filled with spiders, some fighting others. I had to take these guys down. After a bunch of pounding and getting stuck in their webs, I was able to finish them off. Now it's time for the big one. I gave it a good web barrage before I ran into another one. Then an explosion went off. All it takes is a little bit of damage for these big guys, and they do some serious damage. Oscorp's lab has been completely destroyed.